and welcome. I'm your host Aditi Singh and you're watching My India. India is committed to achieving net zero emissions by 2070 and actively promoting investment in renewable energy. The fourth Global Renewable Energy Investors Meet and Expo in Gujarat showcased India's progress in this sector, focusing on infrastructure and innovation. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who inaugurated the event, highlighted India's leadership in green energy and invited global investment to accelerate the country's green transition. India is advancing its green energy goals. Prime Minister Modi recently met with families who have installed rooftop solar panels as part of the PM Suryagar Moft Bijli Yojana. This initiative, launched on February 29th, aims to provide free electricity to 10 million households opting for rooftop solar systems with an investment of 9 billion. Modi also inaugurated the fourth Global Renewable Energy Investors Meet 2024 in Gandhinagar emphasizing India's commitment to a sustainable energy future with a focus on solar, wind, nuclear and hydropower. We have not oil and gas. We are not energy independent. And that's why we have solar power, wind power, न्यूक्लियर और हाइड्रोपावर के दम पर अपने फ्यूचर को बिल्ड करने का फैसला लिया है। गुजरात इस लीडिंग इंडिया के रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी पुश में एक स्ट्रांग फोकस ऑन सोलर पावर। डी स्टेट इस वाइटल टू अचीविंग इंडिया के 500 गिगावाट रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी टारगेट बाय 2030 the state's extensive solar projects, including panels on government buildings, homes, and large solar parks, set a national benchmark, capitalizing on its geographical advantages to harness solar energy. Currently, Gujarat uh, is uh, having overall installed capacity of 28 plus gigawatt in renewables. Out of that, roughly 14.5 gigawatt is solar and we are number one in solar rooftop in the country where more than 50 percent contribution of residential solar rooftop is coming from the state of Gujarat. The Charanka Solar Park in Gujarat's Patan district spans over 5,000 acres and boasts a capacity of over 600 megawatts. This landmark project has transformed a barren area into a key asset in India's renewable energy sector, establishing Gujarat as a solar power leader. Charanka also exemplifies successful public-private partnerships and has generated job opportunities. India is committed to becoming a global leader in green hydrogen, a key element of its decarbonization strategy. Launched in 2023, the National Green Hydrogen Mission aims to drive the transition to clean energy by advancing green hydrogen technologies. Industry leaders are now showcasing cutting-edge innovations in the green hydrogen value chain. The International Conference on Green Hydrogen 2024, held in New Delhi, was aimed at accelerating the development of a robust green hydrogen ecosystem and advancing global decarbonization efforts. India, committed to achieving carbon neutrality, is actively promoting hydrogen production, which currently costs around $3.60 per kg. The government has set an ambitious target to bring this cost down to $1 per kg, making hydrogen a key driver in the clean energy transition. A highlight of the event was the display of hydrogen-powered buses and trucks, showcasing the potential for sustainable, zero-emission solutions in heavy-duty transport. Regarding hydrogen, yes, we want to bring it the cheap hydrogen. Right now, across the globe, we are the cheapest uh, provider of the green energy, be it solar or wind. And Green energy is the basic raw material for production of the green hydrogen, right? And fuel cell. So, because we are the cheapest, we will be able to use the cheapest hydrogen as well as the 
cheapest hydrogen fuel so that way indirectly government is supporting and government has already allocated a, uh, an amount of 19,744 crores for green hydrogen mission so that way indirectly government is also supporting that green vehicles I think the energy that you're putting into green hydrogen here in India is truly an inspiration to the world and um, from a Dutch or a European perspective which I represent we see India as a true driver of the energy transition so we hope to receive a lot of green hydrogen from India produced in India to Europe India has the potential to become a global hub for green hydrogen derivatives due to its abundant land, skilled labor, and affordable renewable energy. By exporting competitively, India can boost its green hydrogen infrastructure, attract global demand, and drive investment, making the country self-reliant in energy production. Let's now take you to Srinagar in Jammu and Kashmir. The city's unparalleled natural beauty, stunning landscapes, rich culture and historical heritage are renowned worldwide. Srinagar is now evolving as a smart city under the Government of India's Smart City Mission, with recent infrastructure developments dramatically reshaping its landscape. Let's explore how these projects are transforming this iconic city. Lal Chowk in Srinagar, with its iconic clock tower, is a historic landmark reflecting the city's evolution. Under the Smart City project, it has been revitalized with new footpaths, wider roads, and renovated buildings in traditional Kashmiri style, preserving its heritage. Now a vibrant hub, Lal Chowk attracts tourists to explore and enjoy its charm. Lal Chowk, then it has what I have read on Google and the folklore that I have heard. Lal Chowk has developed immensely. I think even after the G20, uh, many brands have been introduced, security and safety has been top-notch here. Uh, cleanliness, the beautification has been done beautifully and many of the new, you can see the street lamps, the brands that have been introduced here. And this whole place, this looks very nice. This gives me something similar to the European cities, the cobbled streets like that and something linked with the history, the previous history as well as looking for the new, how the Kashmir is changing. It seems uh, like the fountain flora uh, chalk in Rome or the Paris. At night, Lal Chalk's charm intensifies as the clock tower glows in the colors of the Indian tricolor, creating a mesmerizing view. Modern lighting makes it an attractive tourist spot, even after dark. ...amount of work, in, even in terms of infrastructure. So we don't see it only as a beautification project. It's a project actually which, uh, where now, uh, you know, any inches of rainfall, whenever it falls, it completely dries out in no time, which was not the case earlier. So it has, it has been possible because we, we did a very extensive infrastructure work. And then on top of it, we started creating a pedestrian plaza. And now the footfall is, I think, not less than 400 times of what it was before. So that way, yes, Lal Chowk has greatly contributed to the economy of the place. Uh, it has become a tourist hub and uh, also a very nice place for Srinagar. Polo View Market, one of Srinagar's oldest and most renowned markets, has been revitalized under the Smart City project. Known for its Kashmiri shawls and handicrafts, it has been transformed into a high street pedestrian zone with beautified facades and new benches. This redevelopment has made it an ideal shopping destination for both locals and tourists alike. पहले यहाँ से मतलब सड़क थी लेफ्ट से राइट से यहाँ से जाती थी वहाँ से आती थी लेकिन अब वो बंद कर दिया क्योंकि यहाँ पे यहाँ टाइल्स वाइल्स लगा दिए ये बहुत अच्छा बढ़िया काम कर दिया क्योंकि अब यहाँ पे जब भी कोई आता है तो सुकून से बैठ सकता है 
आराम से बैठ सकते हैं वही मसला वही है I love coming here. I love shopping here. Uh, you are telling me that it's new, but I've come here before also. Uh, the one uh, the other thing that I've noticed this time uh, is I, I've noticed a lot more uh, Delhi brands. So I'm from Delhi, so the brands that you see in Delhi, you know, the chains. So I'm beginning to see them here, which I think is a very positive change. You know, like you know, if you put money in an economy, you can expect it to grow, and you can expect people to think on those lines, along those lines. So I think uh, that's nice. <laughs> The Jhelum River, central to Srinagar's cultural heritage, has also been revitalized under the Smart City project. The riverfront now offers a serene space with pathways, benches, and a cleaner, greener environment. Visitors can also rent bicycles via a simple app, allowing them to enjoy the scenic views and stay active. I like to cycle here. I come with my father daily. It makes a It makes me happy and healthy. जब से स्मार्ट सिटी का ये शुरू हो गया है तो देर हैज बीन रेवोल्यूशनरी चेंजेस काफ़ी अच्छी चेंजेस है जिससे जैसे फॉर द एग्जाम्पल दिस पार्क इट वॉज नॉट देयर बेसिकली बिफोर इट तो इससे क्या हो गया लोग शाम को यहाँ पर इवनिंग में आते दे एन्जॉय दे सिट हेयर ऑन द बैंक ऑफ द रिवर दे एन्जॉय साइकिलिंग हेयर In the evening, the riverfront's beauty is amplified by state-of-the-art lighting and vibrant modern artworks, making it even more stunning. The newly transformed Jhelum Riverfront has become a major attraction for both locals and tourists. The lighting over here is a very good. Like people come here to take pictures from different different places. Like some tourists they like uh, wait here just to take pictures. There are a few things that like catch your attention. There are a few more, like uh, I would say I love Kashmir signs over there. So people come here just to like share some memories on Instagram and stuff. So it's like uh, you know I would say two main people like to come here now a lot. We wanted to create a very nice. uh you can say relation with the water okay. we wanted to uh, we wanted the city to connect back to river jhelum okay. and therefore one of the things was to to open up the jhelum river front so we removed the fences uh, very simple things we did we removed the fences we created the footpaths and between two footpaths we created the green space so in that sense it's a very humble very simply done river front probably i can say it's one of the cheapest river fronts of the country under the shrinagar smart city initiative the city's transportation has been upgraded with battery operated electric buses these buses reduce pollution and provide year round comfort with air conditioning in the summer and heating in the winter Overall, the Smart City project is modernizing Srinagar while preserving its cultural heritage. Uh, Srinagar being a tourist city, it was uh, very much important that we improve uh, the areas and uh, provide more uh, places uh, for communities as well as tourists to visit. So uh, the development of Lal Chowk, uh, Jhelum Riverfront, Polo View has been done keeping both aspects in mind uh, that is providing open space for the community uh, be that uh, that may be through the pr uh, provision of walkways uh, improvement of parks improvement of historical architecture that is near lal chowk improvement of facades so this has been done to not only uh, improve uh, the already existing uh, infrastructure but also uh, provide the cultural heritage tinge to the uh, infrastructure that has come up there Srinagar will now be celebrated not just for its stunning lakes, valleys and mountains, but also as a smart city where modern amenities and cultural heritage seamlessly blend and thrive together. Now let's visit the revered shrine of Hazrat Khwaja Shamsuddin Ghazi in Osmanabad city of Maharashtra. For centuries, people of all faiths have gathered here for his urs. symbolizing unity and peace the participation of both hindus and muslims reflect a deep mutual respect and spiritual connection exemplifying communal harmony and honoring the universal values of love peace inclusivity embodied by hazrat ghazi india's uniqueness lies in its rich diversity encompassing cultural 
regional, linguistic and religious aspects which collectively distinguish it from the rest of the world. Hazrat Khwaza Shamsuddin Ghazi is a revered Sufi saint celebrated for his spiritual teachings and efforts in promoting communal harmony in Usmanabad, Maharashtra. His shrine, a place of spiritual reverence, attracts devotees from various faiths including Hindus and Muslims serving as a symbol of unity. Devotees visit the shrine not only to seek blessings but also to experience the peace and brotherhood it inspires. क्योंकि ऐसे ये दरबार हैं इन्होंने जिंदगी में भी हर ख़ौम का काम किया इसीलिए हर ख़ौम का आदमी इनको आज मोहब्बत की नज़र से देखता है चाहे वो देश का प्रधान हो सीएम हो सभी आकर यहाँ झुकते हैं क्योंकि इन्होंने हमेशा अमन का पैगाम दिया और यहाँ आने के बाद सिर्फ अमन ही की बात होती है Hazrat Khwaza Shamsuddin Ghazi's teaching and the Darga itself symbolize the rich tapestry of communal harmony in the region. His legacy continues to inspire people to foster love and brotherhood, transcending sectarian divides. The Darga welcomes followers from different faiths to seek blessings and inner peace. Our father and father say that when it was started, it was started. तब से ही ये जो परंपरा है जो हिंदू मुस्लिम एकता का जो दर्शन है जो अठारह पगड़ जाति जो है उस्मानाबाद की वो सब मिलके हजरत खाजा शमशुद्दीन जी का जो उर्स है वो सब मिलके मनाते हैं उसमें हर एक जाति जो अठारह पगड़ जाति है अठारह पगड़ जाति में के जो लोग आए उनको हर एक को मान दिया गया है his teachings of love, unity and selfless service resonate deeply in the hearts of many, making him a symbol of hope and spiritual guidance. Through his enduring influence, he remains a beacon of communal harmony and peace in the Osmanabad region and beyond. Now let's delve into World in Focus, featuring the latest global developments and events shaping our world. A new exhibition called Silk Roads opens at the British Museum in London, showcasing the vast trade networks between AD 500 and 1000. Rather than just a single route, the exhibition highlights the multiple overlapping Silk Road networks that connected Asia, Africa and Europe. Co-curator Sue Brunning explains that it wasn't just silk and spices being traded, but also people, objects and ideas travelling by land, sea and river. Artifacts on display include Chinese ceramics, Byzantine jewellery and ancient chess pieces. Highlights include a mural from Samarkand and a gilded silver cup from Iran, loaned by the National Museum Scotland. The exhibition runs from September 26 to February. We move to India's eastern state of Odisha, renowned for its rich art and cultural heritage. The village of Raghurajpur stands out as a prominent hub for Patachitra paintings and has gained worldwide recognition. Let's explore what makes Raghurajpur's Patachitra art so unique and celebrated. Raghu Rajpur is a small village in Puri, a coastal district on the eastern part of Orisha. Renowned for its Patachitra paintings, the village is recognized by UNESCO as a heritage crafts village. Patachitra art depicts mythological events and stories, particularly those related to Lord Jagannath. The vibrant art form adorns the streets and houses, with many local artists practicing this tradition from childhood. <laughs> कि जो पटेजित्र काम होता है ये जो पूरी जागनाथ मंदिर को लेके हम पटेजित्र बनाता है पूरी जागनाथ मंदिर को जो रामायण महाभारत है कृष्णनीला गणेश के ये सब स्टोरी का काम है बनाता है पूरी जागनाथ के जागनाथ जो जागनाथ का जो पचीस का बेस है पर बेस के बनाता है ये पूरी जागनाथ की जो पटेजित्र जो पूरी जागनाथ 
एक बहुत पुराना साल का पटचित्र है Mean Akshay Kumar Bariki, an artist renowned for his mastery of Patachitra art. His paintings are highly valued and have fetched substantial sums. He has received numerous national and international awards, including recognition from UNESCO. ये जो पटचित्र है हमारी पुरानी ट्रेडिशन है मेरे पिताजी दादाजी करते मैं भी कर रहा हूँ पटचित्र में मेरे को 2011 में नेशनल अवार्ड मिला था 2014 में मेरे को यूनेस्को अवार्ड मिला है 2017 में गोल्ड मेडल मिला है पट्ट चित्र पट्ट चित्र एक ऐसा चीज़ है जो रघुराजपुर में शुरू हुआ है पट मतलब थ्री लेयर ओल्ड कॉटन साड़ी से तीन लेयर ओल्ड कॉटन साड़ी को हम इमली के बीच को ग्राइंडिंग करके बॉइलिंग करते गम बन जाता है उसी गम से हम तीन पुराना साड़ी को जॉइंट करते हैं उसको दो साइड में चौक पाउडर देकर पत्थर में बार बार घिसते जब धूप में हार्ड हो जाता है ये हो गया पट जब उसमें नेचुरल छः कलर में पेंटिंग बन जाता है ये हो गया चित्र इसका नाम है पट्ट चित्र The exquisite Patachitra art is indeed remarkable, but there's also Nayak Patna, a village near Raghurajpur, known for its palm leaf painting. And this ancient form, which dates back to when palm leaves were used like paper for writing, remains vibrant in this village and is a major livelihood source for its people. Just a few miles from the heritage village of Raghurajpur is Nayak Patna, where many village women learn and create palm leaf paintings at a local center. The process of making this unique art is very delicate. Artisans use an iron pen to carve intricate, small designs onto dried palm leaves. This art form employs very few colors. Most designs are created through engraving. Many women in this village support their families by selling their paintings. पहले हम जो प्लेन पेपर में उसको आर्ट करते हैं पेंसिल और रबर से उसके बाद हम जो आयरन पेन है लिखन उसके बाद हम ताल पत्थर से काम करते हैं और सभी रामायण महाभारत जैसे और पिक्चर में स्टोरी में इसको हम बनाते हैं हमारी घर के काम के साथ भी हम लोग एक काम भी करते हैं और उससे में हमारे रोजी रोटी भी चलता है मुझे काम अच्छा लगता है आ, मैं आ, एक कलाकृति बचेवाप आम कम करती हूँ यू पेमेंट नहीं आम घर आर्थिक अवस्था सुधर जाता है The artisans of Nayak Patna have practiced this art for centuries, preserving it through generations. It is their primary source of income. हम जो बना पेंटिंग बनाते हैं हमारे इसमें परिवार चलते हैं फिर ऐसे ही हमारा माध्यम था परिवार पालने का हम जो टूरिस्ट लोग यहाँ पे आते हैं उसको भी हम बिकते हैं ऐसे टाइप का होते हैं Nayak Patna and Raghu Rajpur are two villages in Orissa that have preserved their centuries old arts. These villages are invaluable cultural heritage sites in India and the lives of their residents continue to depend on these art forms reflecting the strength of India's rich culture. Jharkhand, the eastern Indian state renowned for its rich tribal heritage, is witnessing a surge in the popularity of its indigenous cuisines. Restaurants across the state are now introducing these tribal delicacies to a broader audience while also emphasizing the cultural significance behind each dish. Join us on a culinary journey through Jharkhand as we explore how traditional cuisines are being revitalized with a modern twist in today's vibrant food scene. Jharkhand in eastern India is home to diverse tribal communities, each with unique cultures and culinary traditions. Tribal cuisine here relies on locally sourced ingredients like bamboo shoots, millets, leafy greens and forest produce with dishes like duska and aru sag as staples cooking often involves minimal spices preserving the natural flavors ajam emba a restaurant dedicated to indigenous cuisine has been serving these traditional dishes for years the restaurant offers a variety of culinary delights made from wild herbs bamboo shoots rice millets 
and meats sourced directly from the forest and natural surroundings. Our Adivasi Khanpan, is the season. स्वाद के साथ में इसके विशिष्ट गुण भी है और जो कि पौष्टिकता के हिसाब से या फिर स्वास्थ्यवर्धक भी है तो उस हिसाब से मैं सीजन वाइज खाना यहां पे लोगों को प्रस्तुत करती हूं Whether it's a simple bowl of rice or a tali featuring regional specialties Jharkhand's culinary delights are attracting food enthusiasts from across India and beyond मेरा फर्स्ट टाइम था यहां आने का मैं अपने दोस्तों से बहुत बार इसके बारे में सुना था बट आज पहला बार ऐसा हुआ कि हमें मौका मिला और हम लोग यहां पे आए टेस्ट वाइज वन ऑफ द बेस्ट आई कैन से और जिस तरह का ट्रेडिशनल वे में ये लोग खाने को सर्व करते हैं दैट इज ऑसम With growing awareness of sustainable, organic, and regional foods, Jharkhand's tribal cuisines are gaining recognition for their nutritional value and connection to nature. The shift towards serving tribal food in urban restaurants marks a revival of the region's tribal traditions. For instance, Café de Art in Ranchi offers a fusion menu featuring tribal-inspired dishes alongside Korean cuisine. Decorated with Sorai and Kovar murals and other tribal elements, the cafe showcases Jharkhand's indigenous heritage while creating a welcoming atmosphere for guests. We thought that we too have so many ingredients and that can be brought to mainstream food which is not yet brought because we have you know like samosa and other things but apne tribal cuisine or organic cuisine you can say that was not in the mainstream. So that was the idea to bring the mainstream, the, the, our cuisine into mainstream food. Uh, what I love about this place, uh, it's a mix of uh, tribal culture and uh, Korean food. So this is a very new concept in our city, Jirachi. By promoting tribal traditions in a modern setting, contemporary cafes are helping to preserve Jharkhand's rich heritage. As more restaurants highlight these unique flavors, indigenous cuisines are set to remain a vital part of the state's culinary identity. The tribal cuisines are thriving as modern restaurants blend tradition with innovation, preserving heritage while appealing to diverse tastes. And with that, we wrap up today's episode of My India. We will see you next week at the same time. Till then, goodbye and take care.